Okay. Can everybody hear me all right? Margarita, can you hear me? Okay, good. <laughs> Just kidding. I got to make truce ahead of time, otherwise on our way home, I'll get beat up. <laughs> so, as we were just listening to Minister Lucy, but before, I, oh, before we even get into this teaching, it's customary that we go before the Lord in praise and in worship. Abba, we praise you, we worship you, we give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for the very breath we take, the steps that you allow us to make. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us throughout the night, keeping all of us in good health and in safe hands. And we thank you, Lord, for sending your guardian angels before us, making the crooked places straight and giving us traveling mercies, Lord, so that we don't hurt anyone and no one hurts us. And Lord, we know that you will give us likewise on our way home and that we, when, we get, when we do get home, our homes will be safe and sound in the mighty name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, for loving us first, for choosing us first in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, today's teaching, as you can, matter of fact, you already have a hint on it because Minister Lucy hit on it when she was up here, and it has to do with the power of the spoken word. You know what, how much power there is in the word? Well, let me give you a little example here, a little light example. Let us go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3. When, you, when you're there, let me say amen. That would be Genesis 1. Chapter 1 and verse 3. And in verse 3, it reads like this. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So you see, that there is a perfect example of the power of the spoken word. But our creator uses it for everything that he needed done, he spoke it. You've never seen or heard of God picking up a, a, a tool or anything to fix up. Okay, he just speaks it and it's done. So that's something that we, should, we need to take that as an example of how we should look at our words. Because every single word that we speak, whether it's an idle word, whether we meant it, whether it's a joke, makes no difference. Whatever you, once you open your mouth and those words come out, it's over. It's a done deal. It's looking for that soil that it will germinate and be fruitful and multiply. Now, whether it's for the good or the evil, that depends on what you were saying. Because if you stop and think about it, the life that you're living right now is because you spoke it. You spoke this life into existence years ago and now you're living it. So in other words, you're, you're reaping the harvest. Now, whether it's good or bad, again, that depends on what you said. So here is a, is a good example where our Creator, in verse 3, says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Amen? Now, with that, I have said so then there was light. And like I said, this is the perfect 
way to understand the power of the spoken word. And when God spoke it, and it happened. Also, if you look over at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, And in verse 28, if, you, if you're there, okay. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish and the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So when you stop to think about that, God blessed them. How? By speaking it. Because then God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Now if you look around, this earth is full of people. And just stop and think, it started with two. <laughs> and two became God knows how many people on this planet. I, I would venture to say at least a trillion. I mean, when you include all the, the entire planet, because people like uh, China and India, oh my goodness, they know how to multiply. <laughs> yes, they do. And God bless them. So as you can see, his word is still resonating today, and it'll continue so, because that's the power of the spoken word. I can't say that enough, because we really need to change the way we talk. Be careful what you say, to whom you say it, and how you say it, because a lot of times the word itself is not enough. Your attitude has a lot to do with it also. If, you know, if you're trying to help somebody but you're not being respectful, you're not being humble, you're not being informative, then, you know, it's going to be a negative for you. You just can't help that. It's just the way the Lord has set it up so that by us keeping the faith, and reading his word, staying in his word, and not just staying reading it, but put it to action. Start with yourself. Change the way you think so that you can change the way you speak. And eventually, you will change the way you live. And I'm talking about for the better. Now, we don't think about negativity because that's not who we are. We are of the light, not of the dark. Amen? So, as in verse 28, be fruitful, multiply, and subdue it, have dominion over the fish and the sea. We just about, there's some species that we just about fished out of. <laughs> Talk about dominion. <laughs> and the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. That's why I don't understand how, especially ladies, you see a spider, next thing you know, you're around the corner. <laughs> what, what was that about? A little old spider. And you're, ping! <laughs> Off they go. <laughs> you're supposed to have dominion over them. <laughs> Um, just, I just figured they put a little joke in there, you know, a little bit of humor. <laughs> so let us move on to, oh yes, John chapter 1, verse 1. And here, John chapter 1 verse 1 it says it very clearly in the beginning was the word and the word was with God 
And the Word was God. What Word? Jesus. So you see, when God, in the first part of Genesis, where he spoke everything into existence, when he spoke, that was Jesus. Uh, amen? He's the one that created everything that God spoke. And he's still doing it today. Do you know that they're still finding planets and solar systems out there due to the technology that we've already put into action over 40 years ago and they're still sending pictures back? That's a lot of it, uh, uh, knowledge. But the Lord works that way. You know, He'll give you the knowledge if you're willing to go through the steps. So with the power of the spoken word, you have to take the steps on going inward and get in contact with your spirit person. The pastor speaks a lot about meditation. Think about that a moment. If you could meditate and get in connection with your, with your spirit person so that you can become as one the way you should be, Thinking, acting, speaking, okay? And then you will see that there's a lot of times that that, that small, still voice doesn't have to be a voice of mystery in the back somewhere, no. It's right here in your head. It's in there. Because he will make it clear for you. Amen? That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go also in J John 1, John chapter 1 and verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. In verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So that just kind of backs up what I just said. When God spoke it, it was Jesus that went out, and he has made it all happen. Awesome God. Yes, he is. Not just like the, the, the praise and worship song, awesome. Yeah, that's him. That's about the one word that really describes the Lord. I mean, when you have no other words to pick or try to sound like some kind of scholar, just that one word. And if you say it from the heart, he's going to hear it. So in John, yeah, okay, that, oh, oh, let us go to Matthew chapter 5. In verse 37, Matthew 5 and verse 37, 37. And here Matthew 5, 37 says, But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. So again, the power of the spoken word. Let your yes be yes. See, when, you, when you're in unity with your spirit, you will feel comfortable when you speak and when you're acting. But the minute you feel a disturbance, like, the, like in the movies they say, the force, a uh, disturbance in the force, <laughs> you know that that's the Holy Spirit nudging you. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Don't do it quite that way, do it this way. <laughs> and this way you will be successful at whatever you put your hands to. It's all in the word. So not just the word, but the way we think and the way we speak. So here in verse 37, where it says, but let your yes be yes and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You know, he loves to put a whole bunch of words together that don't mean nothing. But he can trick you into believing that they are real. He did it to Eve, right? He can do it to you. In, oh, well, let us go to Matthew 6 and verse 33. Now here's one that has a golden rule. If you follow this golden rule, you cannot go wrong. Amen? And it starts like this. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. So again, you need power behind your word. And who else can give you much better power than the Holy Spirit himself? Jesus in you will overcome him that's in the world, okay? So as we're reading here in Matthew 6, 33, you have to seek the Lord first and all his righteousness. Because a lot of people think that uh, if they make it up and, and, and repeat it enough, that it'll become true. But uh, you only need deceiving yourself. Amen? So, with that, let us go to Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2. So in chapter 6 and verse 2, in the book of Proverbs, are you there? Okay. So, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Any word, even like I was saying earlier, whether it's in jest or not. Once the word leaves your mouth, that's it. It's a done deal. It's on its way. Amen. You can't stop the mailman. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at verse 3. You happen to notice this. So do this, my son, and deliver yourself, for you have come into the hand of a friend. Go and humble yourself. Plead with your friend. Words, again, words can either promote or demote. <laughs> you know, you're either going to uplift your, your, uh, your friends and neighbors, your loved ones, or you're going to knock them down. One of, the, one of those two. Okay? So the power of the spoken word is always at hand. That's the one thing that is always there. That law will never step aside. It will, in other words, you're gonna speak, right? Even mutes speak when they use their hands. Those are words. Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about hand 
uh, speaking with the hands, but if, I, if that, that, that's a way of communicating, then uh, to me, I think that should also, that the, the law of the power of the spoken word should also be there too. Amen? Okay, let us go change the page and let us go to Proverbs chapter 4 and verses 23 and 24. In verse 23, Proverbs chapter 4 verse Twenty-three and twenty-four. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. See, again, you got to keep your heart with all diligence. In other words, you have to be aware of your surroundings. Don't allow other people's, excuse me, don't allow other people's uh, behavior or words or whatever ruin your day. Just make it up in your mind that today is, I'm gonna have a happy day. And no matter who tries to unload on me or whatever, I'm just gonna let it just go off me like rain. Okay? But I'm going to have a happy day. And I'm going to be praising the Lord all, all the time. Thanking him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can't thank him enough. But remember, you just don't breathe once. <laughs> You're breathing 24-7. <laughs> so you thank him for that breath. So... That was verse 23 and 24. So, like I said, you, you can't allow other people's attitude to ruin what, you know, what you've got going. Especially like if you're in, I guess the worst place is like when you're in, at that school age where other kids love to pick on you. They don't even know who you are. But just because you happen to be wearing whatever, you know, they want to pick on you. And there they are going to try to ruin your day. <laughs> so that's where you have to dig deep. I mean, you really got to dig deep because when you, when you have that many people tr reacting towards you, it can be, you know, disturbing if, at the least. So anywho, that was Proverbs 23 and 24. Let us go to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37. So in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37 it goes like this. For by your words you will be judged. You will be justified. And by your words you will be condemned. So again, the power of the spoken word is there. Every word that comes out of your mouth on this you're speaking positive, or even when you're hoping for something, or you're praying, asking the Lord for something. You know, allow your heart, your spirit person to be in it. Don't just be, you know, uttering words just to be uttering words. 
do it with feeling. Yeah. Dig deep. You, I know we all have it in us. So for, so like here it says, for your words, you, for by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. So like I said, whether it's for the good or the bad, please be careful of your words. Amen? So that was Matthew 12, 37. Oh, let's look at verse 36. But I say to you that for every little word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Uh, that backs up the other one, don't it? <laughs> You know, your, every word that you speak, you're going to be judged by it. And like I said earlier, you can change your life. You know, change, like the pastor has said many a times, change the way you think and you'll change the way you live. That's straight up. Let us go to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 21. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 21, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Wow, that gives a whole new meaning to the power of the spoken word. Uh, <laughs> it says, and the test and the, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him, him who, that was on the horse. The only one that's going to be on that horse when, he, when the day comes, and that'll be Jesus. Amen. So his word, all right, bless America. Now, as you all know, pastor has been also been doing some teaching that's, that's more or less goes along these lines as well because I keep notes on what he says, you know, and I'm looking here, for example, at Matthew. Matthew chapter 13, verses 8 and Matthew chapter 13 verses 8 and 9 and this is talking about the seed you know words are seeds hello but other fell on good ground and yielded a crop some a hundredfold some sixty some 30. Verse 9. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is wisdom. And it does have a lot to do with the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. So the pastor was talking about making your soil fertile so that you can be fruitful and multiply. 
to get into the word so that the word can get into you and then you can become the Lord's walking billboard. People will be expecting to hear from the Lord anytime they're with you because they know you are connected. It's the same way that uh, Daniel was treated, uh, Joseph, all these men, once, they were, once the, the, the rulers or the kings, whoever it was that was over them, realized that these men are blessed. These men are walking in the guidance of the Lord. And that's how we should take that as an example of how we should conduct ourselves. Try to be as humble as possible and keep your temper you know, under control. <laughs> I know it's not that easy because there's a lot of stuff out there that can trigger your temper in a heartbeat, but you, gotta, you just gotta, you know, try a little harder, so. If at first you don't succeed, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, and he was speaking that through the, 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 the fruitful and multiply, then he was talking about productivity. 100 times more. Now we know that when we read in the book of Deuteronomy chapter one and verse 11, it talks about a thousand times more. Hallelujah to that. Okay, so productivity, and then he was speaking about revelation. Allow the plow to work your ground by fertilizing, there it is, see? Fertilizing your ground, your soil. How do you do that? The ingredients is all in here. Every bit of it. Without it, you go without. So, as he's saying here that you, you're gonna get revel, revelation. Now, he also went over to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. Matthew 19 and verse 26. In Matthew 19, verse 26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So I would say if you want to be successful in life, just pick up the Bible. Amen. Study it every single day. Try to make it so that you're looking forward to it. It's like uh, back in the day when you used to read those novellas. You couldn't wait to get home to find out <laughs> what happened next. Well, you could do that with the Bible as well. I mean, like stories of Ruth and Joseph and Daniel and all them other people that are in the Bible. They can keep you pretty busy, trust me. So when he says, with God all things are possible, but without God, everything is impossible. Now here's another thing too that he also was hitting on, and that was Hebrews chapter 11 and verse six. Without faith, 
it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So like I was saying, if you make it a habit of getting into the word every single day, even if it's just one or two verses, you know, or maybe three or four verses, whatever you have that will stimulate the growth spiritually within you. If that's what you want to do, you want to continue growing in the word. So like he said here, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you have to have faith in yourself first. Because if you don't have faith in yourself, how are you going to have faith in anybody else? You know, it's just like love. You got to love yourself first before you can love anybody else. They kind of work hand in hand that way. In Matthew, Chapter 17, my seed and faith will move mountains from here to there. Let's look at Matthew chapter 17. And I'm bouncing back and forth <laughs> to Matthew. some reason the pastor likes Matthew. <laughs> Matthew 17 and verse 20. Amen? Amen? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But you got to have faith. And I also said, well, my, my faith is kind of weak. Well, if, if it's bigger than a mustard seed, you, you got it going on. Okay, don't worry about it. Just go through the motion. Eventually, you'll get the rhythm. And once you get the rhythm, Hey, you can dance with the rest of us. <laughs> mm. oh, still got a little time. That's okay, great. So let's go back over what we just went through, right? starting with Genesis chapter 1 where the Lord God said let there be light you know the Lord loves us so much he loves us so much he knew everything that was going to happen how Jesus would have to come and save us you know how people that we read about in the Bible, the things that they had to go through. All of these things, and yet he has time to love on us, forgiving us, helping us to do better by not leaving us alone because he keeps us occupied, or I should say accompanied by the Holy Spirit and Jesus. But the Jesus in you, think about it. And then you have the Holy Spirit just outside of you. How can you go wrong? You've got more power behind you than the devil will ever have. But he thinks that he can talk you into belittling your thoughts, belittling your dreams, you know, uh, making you lose focus on what life has to offer you, because there's a lot out there. I mean, I, I, some people feel, oh, I can't find anything to do. Well, that's because you're not looking. Yeah. All you gotta do is open your eyes. No matter what it is that you are looking for in life, it's out there. Whether it's good or evil, 
It's out there. Now, if you can walk by faith and not by sight, then you'll be walking down the righteous path. Following every word that the Lord has given you to the letter. I don't mean that you should try to act like the Pharisees or the Sadducees that lived by the word, you know, every word. No. That's religion. That's not what the Lord has for you. The Lord has relationship for you, for us, so that we can all be related. Whether it's spiritual, physical, mental, whatever you call it, we're going to be as one. As he is one. Well, I hate to cut this teaching short. It looks like we're still got five minutes. Okay, let's see what else we can find over here that the good Lord, the Lord has for us. See, we were just looking at, oh, he said, look at Matthew chapter 20 and verse 1. Let's go to Matthew chapter 20 and see what verse 1 is about. Oh, this is the parable of the workers in the vineyard. So in verse 1 it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to their laborers for his vineyard. In other words, he was going out looking for workers. Okay? Now, if you, have ever, if you guys have read this entire story, you will see that we're, we're relating God, who is the vineyard owner, and those of us that want to work for him. More or less, that's what this story is about right here. So, according to the word, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Hmm. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. Look at verse 2. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a dinaris a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So in other words, the guys that were there, they were all offered the same amount of money. And as you know, this story, the way it goes, he went throughout the whole day looking for workers. And no matter what time of day it was, he offered them the very same amount of money. A denari a day. Now, as you know, when it gets to the end, <laughs> and the guys that were there all day long from early in the morning to when it was time to get paid, they started to moan and groan, complaining that they did all the work, but that the other guys who came late, who owned, there was a one guy that was there one hour, and he got the same amount of money. So you know how they felt. But what they failed to realize is that God didn't lie to us. He said it, a dinare, a day, regardless of how many hours. If you want to work, you got to make that. But for them to say, oh, well, it's not fair. What's not fair? It's his money. It's his vineyard. You're the one that needs to do the job. <laughs> so either you're going to get paid and get on with your life, or sit there and moan and groan and get paid anyway. <laughs> well, let me not hold you all too long today. We have actually did 45 minutes of teaching. And I am very, very happy that the Lord, that the Lord allowed the pastor 
or put it on the pastor's heart to allow me to come and bring the word because that's one subject that has always, always been on my mind. It's the power of the spoken word. I learned that about the power of the spoken word years ago when my son, Junior, <laughs> he came home one day, he says, we're gonna be millionaires. We are? Yeah. I got this business that's going to make us millionaires. Well, needless to say, we did meet a lot of millionaires that were in that business, but that wasn't us. <laughs> and he's the in there one or this gentleman. He was the head millionaire. This guy has so much money. His, he had a garage. You know, like the rest of us, we may have a one or two car garage, right? This guy had a 24 car garage. And you name it, it was in there. He even had the ghost up in there. That Rolls Royce. Oh, oh this man had money. <laughs> okay, and you name it, I mean, Rolls Royce, Bentleys, uh, the, the, oh, the Mercedes one, uh, the uh, Maybach. Whew. Do you know how much a Maybach goes for today? It's almost two million dollars. It's something like 1.8. <laughs> That's a lot of money for driving a car down the road. Okay, but then again, Maybach, you're talking big, big bucks. Well, family, I'm trying to keep it civilized. <laughs> Don't want you all getting angry at me. But I would like to introduce, uh, bring up our first lady who will uh, close us out. <laughs>